And moving on to markets, and this week's WASDE report had a few surprises in store for producers. Joining me now to discuss that and more is DTN lead grain market analyst Todd Holtman. Todd, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, my pleasure. It looks like the quarterly grain stocks report compelled the USDA to make some updates to the supply and demand expectations in the October WASDE report. This was released this week. Uh, what are those numbers indicating to you, and what was your overall reaction to this report? Yeah, for both corn and soybeans, the numbers were a little higher than expected when they initially came out on September 30th. For corn, it was a small uh, incremental change, uh, a bit higher, but in the case of soybeans, it was quite a surprise to the market. 256 million bushels of ending soybean stocks when many of us were expecting, you know, 150, 160, or even lower. Uh, and, and really throughout most of the year, we'd been looking at a 135 million bushel estimate. So to see that uh, uh, big increase there at the end of the year was a bit of a surprise and it's still having a bearish effect on our soybean prices today. And some big changes there for soybeans. What was the big takeaway with wheat? Well, in uh, Tuesday's report, uh, a lot of the wheat adjustments turned out to be bullish. And uh, as you mentioned, that was tipped off by the September 30th reports also. Uh, 580 million bushels of ending wheat stocks in the U.S. this year is the lowest total we've seen in 14 years. Of course, the production estimate down around 1.65 billion bushels is the lowest U.S. wheat production we've seen in 19 years. So the wheat supplies have come down dramatically. Uh, and that's also true in the world numbers as well. And Todd, how are things looking around the country as harvest continues to roll along? Any projections there? Yeah, uh, I think the crop estimates that came in Tuesday from USDA are actually pretty decent estimates. They, they uh, slightly lifted the corn yield estimate, I believe it's 176 and a half now. Uh, the crop estimate really has been stuck right around that 15 billion bushel mark, and uh, I, I think that's probably where things are going to end up when we get to the final numbers in January. Uh, for soybeans, a lot of us were expecting a little higher yield estimate in Tuesday's number, and that did come through. 51 and a half bushels an acre is the new yield. You know, uh, everything was looking quite dry and a little bit scary there midsummer. But when we got those late rains in August and September, I think it really helped some of those marginal areas and we saw improvement in that soybean number. So uh, I, I actually think these October estimates uh, for the crops are not too bad uh, as uh, compared to previous years. And uh, I think they'll probably be close to what we see in January. And while producers are dealing with harvest here in the United States, producers in Brazil are planting. Bad weather had been a thorn in the side of producers there over the last year. Uh, what have conditions been like recently? Yeah, they, they really took it on the chin on their corn crop, uh, the second corn crop at, at late season uh, last year. Since that time, it's been dry up until just recently. Brazil has started to see their rainy season start to come alive. It's looking much more favorable uh, in the country, I think, to get their planting and their new crops uh, established there. In the case of Argentina, they're a bit dry and they may be a bit afflicted by La Nina uh, later this fall. Uh, that remains to be seen, but uh, uh, a drier Argentina is one of the effects uh, that we would expect from a La Nina condition. And the global supply chain continues to tighten. How is this predicament impacting our exports? Uh, it, it's quite a mess and uh, there's so many aspects to it, it, it's hard to know where to start. But uh, our shipping costs are higher. It costs roughly twice as much to uh, ship corn and beans from the U.S. to China as it did at the start of this year. Of course, you hear about all kinds of uh, port congestion that they're working on trying to relieve, uh, not only here in the U.S., but different ports around the world uh, as well, uh, just a log jam of ships. And then, of course, here in the U.S., we had Hurricane Ida hit just right at the end of uh, 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 August and uh, really caused damage to some of our grain terminals on the lower Mississippi River that we're just recovering from now. So it, it's been a mess and, and uh, it's given us a slow start to our export activity in the season ahead. But uh, thankfully, thankfully, it looks like that river traffic is starting to improve again. And Todd, before we let you go, do you have any marketing or risk management advice that you'd care to impart on our viewers? Yeah, well, uh, for right now, during the harvest period, it tends to be the usual thing, and that is just hang in there. Uh, 
overall, we try to encourage customers to make plans so they don't have to sell crops at harvest time because that does tend to be the low of the year. And I think we're gonna see that again uh, this year. Typically, the better pricing opportunities come when you get that crop uh, stored away in the bins, uh, give it some time this winter. Hopefully, we can get past that uh, turn of the calendar into January. And that's when you see uh, commercials starting to bid up prices a little better, typically to try to pull that grain out of storage. So if uh, you can hang on to the first of the year, I think you're gonna find some better pricing opportunities.